Good morning. My name is Anaí Quiroz Romero, and I have been a member of Chalice for the last eight years. I have never celebrated El Día de los Muertos, and the only altar I have ever created was one that I participated in when I was in high school, and we were replicating the traditions of an old town where they created the offering as the shape of a body. I want to change this about me, and this is why I wanted to share with you the story of how my beliefs about the afterlife have changed. The origins of Dia de los Muertos come from a combination of the Catholic religious rituals brought by the Spaniards and the commemoration of the Day of the Dead that the natives carried out since pre-Hispanic times. Native communities transferred the veneration of their dead to the Christian calendar, which coincided with the end of the agricultural cycle of corn these preparations are made with particular care as there is a belief that a disease can bring prosperity or misery depending on whether it is satisfactory or not the way in which the family has carried out the tradition this is a time of mourning celebration an opportunity to pay tribute to the dead and honor them after my activism brought me to our congregation and I fell in love with our mission because I believe in it wholeheartedly, I allowed myself to become a Unitarian Universalist when I learned that I would be free and responsible to continue my search for truth and meaning. As a Jehovah's Witness, I was taught to believe that answers to the questions, where am I going, where do I come from, and why am I here, were very important. With my Jehovah's Witness upbringing, I was taught to believe that the body and the soul are one. And when the body dies, the soul, life, the soul dies, and there is no afterlife. It was made clear that you could not communicate with the dead, and any time it looked like someone had communicated with them, they were either charlatans or they had gotten in touch with some sort of evil spirit, not their loved one. Satan and his demons were as real as you and me. We would hear stories of angels protecting witnesses from harm while they were preaching. I am grateful that I was not taught to believe about hell. Instead, I was promised resurrection, the belief that one day I would be, see, I would be able to see my loved ones again. I read so many times while preaching, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more, Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. It was fun to imagine what I would ask Job or Jonas when they were resurrected in the new world, as we called it. Heaven was not for me or my loved ones. I knew that angels and archangels were real, but I was not encouraged to ask them for their help. The spirit world existed, but there was no safe way for me to get in touch with it. I noticed this contradiction when a friend who told me that she saw my spirit guides asked me, you don't talk to your spirit guides, do you? I don't, but if anybody were to ask me if I have felt their protection, I usually call that the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that I was blessed with when I was baptized when I was 11. In 2014, I began to participate in sweat lodges on a regular basis in a non-traditional setting after my mom graduated from hospice care. My conscience allowed me to show up without expectations, an open heart and mind. I was promised emotional release, healing, and the opportunity to go into our mother's womb, to be reborn and see the world with new eyes. Most people did not cross the invisible line between the fire and the entry of the lodge. This space was reserved for our ancestors, where they hang out after we call them during the first round of prayers. I became a firekeeper, so I was allowed to be within this space. I learned death offered us the opportunity to have a different kind of relationship. I started treating stones as our grandfathers and tried to gain wisdom from them. This is how I started to believe that maybe something else happened after we died. The separation between the body and the soul became clearer when I witnessed a couple of cats and birds die. I noticed that there was a huge difference in the body after the life force was gone. I see it as a split second when something is there and then it's gone. 
I don't know what that it is, but right now I'm calling it the soul. When my mother died, her friends annoyed me because they were crying in the hallway and I wondered where their faith in the resurrection was. I remembered the story about Jesus when his friend Lazarus died and he told his sisters, your brother will rise again. Then when he went to the tomb to wake him up and he asked for it to be removed, Martha said, there should be bad smell since it has been four days. Jesus said to her, didn't I tell you that if you believe you will see God's glory? I thought, women of little faith. I could not feel my sorrow, but I felt my uncle's pain. I never said my mother died because I knew she had gone dancing and there was only one place where she would have been able to do that. That is heaven. And that is not what I had expected. I never thought that the belief in heaven would comfort me. I swear, I had this image of my mother in the clouds, healthy, happy, and it was an image that didn't come from a movie, I swear. Then, the weekend after my mom's passing, I saw 14 bluebirds on my hike to Sandstone Peak. Bluebirds are often considered a spirit animal who bring messages from the spirit world. Bluebirds symbolize hope, love, and renewal. Bluebirds always cross my path when I'm not paying attention to remind me to find joy in the little things. After I saw one bluebird after another, I felt they were telling me not to be sad because death, the benevolent goddess as I have always known her, showed up when my mom could not endure another day. When I started sweating a few years ago, my friend kept saying that this was an initiation for me. I didn't know what that meant, but now, seven years later, our ancient mother seems to be calling me to the shamanic path that helps beings cross to the other side. I can't ignore it. All I know is that everything pushed me away from this path, between the religion that I was raised and migration, yet this path still easily found me. I have always known that a good name is better than fine perfume and the day of death is better than the day of birth because you already know everything that that person did and that it's better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. I wonder if maybe there was a shaman in my lineage and that is why I am drawn to the shamanic energy. There's probably like three or four generations of women in my family that have not taken this path. But if I ever pursue the answer to this question, I am sure I will share the story with the congregation. Sometimes the hummingbird, sometimes the raven, sometimes the hawk tells us when to go. But we, Mexica, do not die. We only change our house, our body, and every year we come back. So I want to invite you to Set up a little altar for a loved one. Take out the things that they used to love, maybe perfume, maybe a beverage. And if you show up with an open mind, an open heart, without expectations, maybe you'll get visited by a spirit. Thank you.